John Malcolm is joining us. He is a constitutional government vice president for the Heritage Foundation here for the Institute of Constitutional Government at the Heritage Foundation. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. Pleasure to be with you. What are you looking for this week in that hearing? Well, it'll be very interesting to hear what Rod Rosenstein uh, has to say. You know, full disclosure, I worked with Rod Rosenstein. I actually consider myself to be to be a friend of his. That having been said, he's going to be asked a lot of very tough questions. So I would expect he would be asked, for instance, about what evidence he saw in May of 2017 when he appointed uh, Robert Mueller as the special uh, counsel. You know, it is now known that there were a whole bunch of, uh, of officials that appeared behind closed doors in the House Intelligence Committee at that time, and they all said that they didn't see uh, any direct evidence of any collusion between the Trump campaign Uh, and the Russians. So what did Rod Rosenstein say, see that made him open that up? Uh, As your last guest just said, a month later, Rod Rosenstein's name, he's a signatory on the fourth uh, Carter Page FISA warrant. Uh, It has now come out that there were many glaring omissions and misstatements uh, in those warrants. What factual investigation did he do uh, to look into that? And the Steele dossier uh, you know, which, which served as the backbone of all four of the Carter Page warrants. Uh, I suppose he'll also be asked, uh, look, that he wrote a memorandum. He advised the president that there were real, very solid grounds to uh, fire former FBI director uh, Jim Comey. And then all of a sudden, Bob Mueller turns around and uses that firing as part of a predicate for investigating whether or not the president obstructed justice. Why did Rod Rosenstein expand Mueller's mandate to cover uh, that sort of thing. And I suppose generally, Rod Rosenstein has said that at various times, uh, he was told that the president was not a suspect, that there was no evidence tying uh, certainly the president to any alleged collusion. Why didn't Rod Rosenstein say that to the president or say that uh, publicly uh, rather than sort of putting the country through what we've gone through the last three years? Those will be some of the questions I expect you'll get. Our phone lines are open at 202-748-8000. Our line for Democrats in 202-748-8001. If you're a Republican and independents, 202-748-8002. I want to ask you about General Michael Flynn. So walk us through the facts. What did he do? What didn't he do that led to his firing? Well, that led to his firing... Uh, so Michael Flynn was the, the designated national security advisor uh, in December 29th, I believe it was, of 2016. He had one of actually a series of conversations with then Russian ambassador Sergei Kislyak. Uh, and the question of sanctions came up uh, during that conversation. Uh, there was then a leak uh, to David Ignatius of The Washington Post, who published an article uh, about that conversation, uh, the vice president was, talked to Flynn and then went on television and said that sanctions did not come up during that call. Well, it turns out that sanctions had come up uh, during that call. Uh, and so the vice president then went to the president and said, you know, he's made me look bad on national television. I don't trust him. He should be fired. So he was fired a mere 24 days after he became national security advisor. Uh, and then later on, Uh, Actually, uh, he was charged with lying to the FBI during what I think can only be characterized as an ambush interview that took place on January 24th, 2017, only two days after he had actually become the national security advisor. And that led to all of his court court problems that we're still going through. And I understand the point about ambush interview. But just to be clear, he did lie, correct? Not that he should be charged with that, but he did lie about what he said or didn't say. I don't think that that is clear at all anymore. Uh, And the reason why I say that uh, is that one, uh, as of a couple of days ago, a transcript of that call between Michael Flynn and Sergei Kislyak uh, has come up. And supposedly what the FBI asked him during that interview, although the original memorandum of interview has somehow been lost or it's never been produced, they asked him, did you tell the Russians to refrain from issuing sanctions against the United States. He said, I don't recall saying that. And it turns out from the transcript, he did not 
uh, say that. What he said was that cooler heads needed to prevail. He understood that the Russians needed to retaliate by imposing sanctions, but that they shouldn't escalate the situation, that any sanctions that they impose should be reciprocal. Uh, so I think it's very unclear whether or not he told a lie. But even if he did, by the way, there were all kinds of other problems uh, with the case that I think you know, the, the, his motion to withdraw should be granted and then let the chips fall where they may. And I just want to use this opportunity. This is uh, the letter that uh, was unclassified. It's available on our website at cspan.org. It was released on Friday. Uh, it was from the uh, John Ratcliffe. And it also includes, as you just mentioned, the declassified conversation that took place on the 29th of December in 2006, 2000, uh, 2016. Uh, again, it's on our website at cspan.org. Let's get to your phone calls. Dan is first up from Independence, Oregon. Good morning. Hello. Um, all I have to say is, as long as FUBAR is in charge of the Attorney General, then we'll get no justice in the United States. None at all. Thank you, Dan. Well, let's hear from the Attorney General. He talked about the, the his claim that he does not want to see the Justice Department politicized during this process. He spoke to reporters earlier this year. Let's watch. Past few decades... Uh, there have been increasing attempts to use the criminal justice system as a uh, political weapon. The legal tactic has been to gin up uh, allegations of criminality uh, by one's political opponents based uh, on the flimsiest of of legal theories. Uh, This is not a good development. This is not good for our political life and it's not good for the criminal justice system. And as long as I'm attorney general, the criminal justice system will not be used for uh, partisan political ends. And this is especially true uh, for the upcoming elections in, in November. We live in a very divided country right now, and I think that it is critical that we have an election where the American people are allowed to make a decision, a choice between President Trump and Vice President Biden based on a robust debate of policy issues. And we cannot allow this process to be hijacked by efforts to drum up criminal investigations uh, of either candidate. And I'm committed that this election will be conducted without this kind of interference. Any effort to pursue an investigation of either candidate has to be approved by me. That from the Attorney General Bill Barr and John Malcolm is somebody who served as the Assistant Attorney General during the first term of the George W. Bush administration. Your reaction? Well, uh, slight correction, I was a Deputy Assistant Attorney General in the Criminal Division. Look, I, I, I don't disagree with anything that Bill Barr just said. I don't think that any of either party to want to see the you know, most important uh, and prominent law enforcement agency in the country, not to mention the intelligence community, weaponized for political purposes. That's the kind of thing uh, that happens in totalitarian regimes. Uh, it should not happen in this country. And if it did happen in this country, and that investigation is still uh, ongoing and the facts are still being unspooled practically daily, we will find out whether it did happen If it did, I assume that measures will be taken to make sure or at least minimize the likelihood that that will ever happen again. 